Can the XLE chip finally save the Dell XPS and make it worth buying again, or should you just buy the M3 Air instead? Well, we're gonna compare everything in this video to find out, so here are all of the specs for each machine, and let's jump right into the design differences. Now, some people really don't like the function keys being touch instead of actual buttons, but honestly, I don't mind it that much, and I have to say, I really like the super clean look of the Dell XPS. This looks way more futuristic than the MacBook. I like that the keyboard goes all the way to the edge and it also feels really good with a good amount of key travel. Of course, the MacBook also feels really nice and the MacBooks have the best trackpads, but now the Dell has this hidden trackpad that's also magnetically haptic, so it feels really nice. It's very responsive. I definitely dig it. And this thing also has Windows Hello built in, whereas the MacBook, even with that notch, it doesn't have Face ID, but the Mac has Touch ID, which the Dell has a fingerprint scanner built in as well. And with the XPS being so tiny, how are the speakers? Let's test them. Now the Dell does get loud, but it almost feels like they're pushing the speakers too much because the sound quality on the Mac is a lot better, but you let us know below. Now it's crazy how small the XPS is, and it also weighs only 2.6 pounds compared to 2.8. It is a little bit thicker on the back, but it is a wedge-shaped design. And the crazy thing is it only has two USB Type-C ports. Now they are fast, but the Mac has an extra MagSafe charging port, so you have both of theirs available. Now getting into displays, the MacBook looks a lot better. That's because it has a higher resolution. This is the 1200p version of the XPS. And while the brightness is the same, the blacks just look so much better because this has a really strong anti-glare coating on it. This really stands out if you're watching dark contrasty video where the blacks look pure gray and the viewing angles are really bad. Now, yes, it is super super anti-glare, so you don't have to deal with the reflections, but I prefer the MacBook screen, or you can spend extra and upgrade XPS to a different one. Now, no matter which laptop you buy, this right here is a Ugreen Nexode 100 charger, which can put out 100 watts max of fast charging, which could charge up the MacBook Air to 55% in less than 30 minutes, or even four devices at once, since it has a total of four ports, while having a super compact design being smaller than Apple's 96 watt adapter. They also have their Ugreen Nexode power bank, 25,000 milliamp hour, 145 watt, which puts out up to 140 watts of fast charging power, charging the 16 inch MacBook Pro from zero to 56% in 30 minutes with 25,000 milliamp hours of capacity to charge it up to 1.3 times, or you can fast charge three devices simultaneously. Check out Ugreen's huge Prime Day deals up to 41% off using the links in the description below. Now getting into performance, I'm gonna start out by testing the SSDs. Now the Dell is slightly more expensive at base, but it comes with a 512, whereas the Mac, if you upgrade to that, well, the price is the same, but you're still short on RAM because you only get eight instead of 16. And the Dell is almost twice as fast in terms of read speeds and in terms of write speeds, it is twice as fast. These SSDs are incredible. And even if you upgrade the Mac, you won't get this performance. The RAM is also insanely fast. Getting into CPU performance, I have Geekbench opened up right here. I'm gonna run it. And of course we have 12 performance cores compared to just four performance core and four efficiency. And as you can see, I plugged in the Dell XPS because in the past with the Intel models, they would slow down unplugged. So we are gonna test that. And looking at the performance, this is impressive. In terms of single core, the 
the XPS X Elite is only 8% slower. Now this is the 80 SKU, so it's a nice X Elite chip. And in multi-core, we have a difference of 22%. This X Elite is incredibly fast. But of course that was plugged in, so let's test it unplugged. And now looking at this, the single core did get a little bit slower along with the multi-core, but by a very small amount, it's practically insignificant and that is great for Dell laptops. The Intel ones would drop so much and they cost more money than this X Elite. So thank you Snapdragon Qualcomm for this excellent chip and Dell for the savings. And now let's test out the web browsing and web application performance. And looking at the scores, the M3 still wins because of its excellent single core performance, about 25% faster, but the X Elite is not a slouch. And now let's really push these systems to their limits with Cinebench. And you have to remember that the MacBook Air is fanless compared to having active cooling. And now I'm looking at the temps. You could see on the X Elite, we're at 45, 46 degrees Celsius. And on the MacBook, we're at 45 degrees Celsius. But of course, the fans really help out on the XPS. And look at that, guys. We have 906 on the XPS compared to 554. That's 64% faster. And we were on battery. That is incredible. And of course, because the X Elite is powerful and because this is fanless and because that's a lot of becauses. This task got done so much quicker, it actually helps save battery life. Now, what about the graphics performance? Well, I have the new Steel Nomad Lite. Let's go ahead and run this. And we have our results right here, 14.7 FPS compared to 21.8. The M3 is almost 50% higher frame rate. So the graphics, it's just not the strong suit of the X Elite. Now, as far as battery life, we weren't focused on that because I wanted to test it uh, both plugged in. So we had it plugged in for a little bit, but during this time, they lost about the same amount of battery. And that just means that the X Elite is doing a great job. If this was an older Intel version, it would slow down on battery and still suck so much more power compared to this new chip. So did the X Elite save Dell and their XPS laptops? Honestly, I think yes, it's a much better machine, quieter, faster, better battery life. But if you're trying to decide between these two, I still think that the M3 MacBook Air is a better overall choice. But if you need a Windows laptop, your choices are so much better now. And this thing is tiny, it's fast, it's a good machine. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.